terrific Tuesday. We got a lot of good show to get into, so let's start it up. Let's start it off, y'all, yeah. because I have to say, I am very excited because we are on Lenny Kravitz Watch Around Her. <laughs> yes. Yes, Lenny will be here on Thursday. <sighs> but he is so fine, but he is already giving us a sneak peek of what he is bringing. <laughs> He posted this picture saying, standing in love and gratitude. And I'm in gratitude. Oh, I'm in gratitude. Like, Lenny, you don't have to worry. I'm standing in love and gratitude for this picture. And I just, I want to know what Lenny Kravis smells like. I mean, <laughs> is it outdoorsy? Is it like, what, what is it? It's, it's funny, he, he has like a fragrance with Dior, I believe it is. Does so, he? Or G Givenchy, one what, of them. Givenchy, Dior. <laughs> After midnight, I just want to know. <laughs> but once again, Lenny will be here Thursday, so y'all don't miss it. Oh, my goodness. I'm keeping everybody around me. If you even look like you're sick, I'm like, get away from me, because I'm going to be here. Uh, you know, Gail King is getting in on a prank that is trending, and there's a prank that people are doing on social media where they call friends and family, and they say that they got a job as an underwater welder. So Gail played the prank on her best friend, Oprah, saying that they had been approached to learn how to cap an oil rig. <laughs> Take a look. So ExxonMobil is offering this program. They bring people in. They're going to train us on how to cap an oil rig. I said, if Oprah does it, I'll do it. So are you interested in learning how to cap an oil rig? Is this your I'm thinking about it face? Mm-mm. No. I'm not interested in how to cap an oil rig. What if you approach it like stepping out of your comfort zone and trying something you've never done before? Well, capping an oil rig is not something I want to do in this <laughs> life. Okay, <laughs> not on my list of... Look, it's not on my list either. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> well, I'm not going to do it by myself. Ask your other friend. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oprah shut it down with, uh, ask your other friend to do it, okay? We don't even know who Gail has other friends. <laughs> so it's like Oprah's going, I don't care who you ask, but don't ask me. <laughs> it's so funny playing a prank on Oprah. It's hard to gauge how Oprah's gonna be with a prank because she's so fun, but you don't know if you're going too far with it. So I just think, Gail, if you're gonna prank Oprah, you gotta get her with something good. Like, you gotta call Oprah and say, Oprah, they wanna get us out of our comfort zone. They want us both to get on the stripper pole. You know, we gotta go, <laughs> we, we gotta go undercover as strippers, okay? <laughs> Because look, that would be more interesting to Oprah than anybody working on an oil rig. That doesn't even sound sexy. So, Gail, next time, just get, a, get, get it with the stripper pole prank. Like, me and you could go, and then you know how to get Oprah to go as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, y'all, when I tell you, I'll be telling these women to take my advice, 
but my friend Egypt Sherrod has not been taking my advice. Now, Egypt was here with her husband, Mike. They were here with me, and I told her that she got to stop posting these sexy thirst trap pictures of her husband. Look at, look at Mike over there when they went on vacation. But EJ don't want to listen to her friend, so she posted her husband saying he's her man crush Monday, and she said he's a delicious dad. Look at this, okay? Y'all wives better stop posting your husbands and teasing us single women, okay? Y'all married women, you're getting out of control because <laughs> let me tell you something. My mother and my grandmother and my aunties all used to say to me, don't let all your friends know what a good man you got. Don't tell other women how good he is in bed or how he makes you feel or what God didn't send this one to you because yes, they are your girlfriends, but if they're single, some of your girlfriends you can't trust if they're single. Look, at, at Egypt, you can't trust me. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this picture. I'm looking at her husband, Mike, and I was just like, look at all them abs. Look at this ab Now, Mike is a professional builder and he's a home renovator. So sometimes I will DM Mike and I, like, I will DM Mike and I say, uh, in my place, it, Mike, if I need a whole new bathroom, what would that cost? Actually, I probably need to stop doing that to, to <laughs> Mike. Cause he's really sweet. Cause he, like, I can call Mike for, for information and where I is, I'd have to pay a contractor to consult with me. So Mike is like my freebie that I call. So I need to, you know, I need to stop asking Mike about fixing plumbing. So you see, you see, Egypt, you got me being disrespectful right there. <laughs> disrespectful I've been, but y'all, y'all better stop telling women what you got at home and how good he looks and how delicious he is because Egypt, single women over here, we are not eating and we hungry. <laughs> you know these women, Egypt, Sherrod, you know these women out here crazy, but I gotta say this, I love you both and your husband got some nice abs, girl. I will say that. <laughs> oh gosh, and here's another one, another husband. Sterling K. Brown, he let his wife, Ryan Michelle Bathe, down big time. So after the NAACP uh, Image Awards this weekend, Ryan wanted to go to the after parties, but Sterling wanted to go home. So she went on Instagram to show her disappointment. Take a look. Because my husband <laughs> made me leave the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People Awards. The Colored People Awards. Because he wants to come home. Cause he said he had to come on home. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit in my chair. I'm gonna sit in my, my mommy timeout chair. The chair I sit in when folks get on my nerves. <laughs> okay, I gotta just say, I'm so upset with Sterling because when he was on TV with, with her before, he kept talking about how fine his wife is and giving her the compliments. But now he don't want, he don't want Ryan out there in the streets by herself. So I think he was smart to put her, that bird back in the cage. But you know what? She had people come over. Look at Ryan. She had people come over to do her hair. She had people come over to do her makeup. Look at her in that tight gown. She, look, Ryan is like, I am ready to party. <laughs> anybody that got their leg out like that, <laughs> anybody with their leg out like that, Ryan is ready to party and be out in the streets until six in the morning, okay? <laughs> She goes out, you know, when you got your leg out like that, that's the attitude right there. That's like, I look good. Ryan is like, I'm ready to do the wobble, okay? <laughs> she ready to hit all the country line dances that Beyonce got from the album. She want to be, Ryan wants to be a part of everything. So I say, Sterling, come on. You can't go to one after party with your wife. Even if you just sit down on the couch and watch her dance with the other women and watch her be fly, then you take her home. But see, and then you don't know what could happen because she's all happy you take her home. It could be some nice stuff going on <laughs> at home. You let her be happy. She looks amazing. But now y'all done went home, Sterling, because Sterling tired. He laying across the bed in his tux, falling asleep. <laughs> so now she got to wake Sterling up to help her get out of the dress. I feel like in that dress with Ryan Sterling, y'all had about four more good hours and you to party. So at least, you know, uh, for me, when I was at the NAACP Image Awards after we won, um, after uh, I, I won the award, uh, my staff and I, I took them to a thank you. Everybody. It was, it was so many, the staff, 
So we we didn't get to go party and we because I was hungry. We went to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. That's where we went. Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. And then y'all should have seen doggone Marco at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. He was Mar, Ro, listen to Marco. Marco <laughs> Marco had was so, had so much fun, and I, and and I don't know what kind of wine you was drinking. Marco, we were at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffle while he was eating In and Out burgers <laughs> at Roscoe's, <laughs> and then he ordered a whole nother. He ordered the Obama special, which is two waffles, four wings, scrambled eggs with cheese, and some cornbread. And he and all Marco ate that. He got out, and he was so you were so loud. You was having a good time. I, I, I love to eat, Sherry. I can't help it. You were eating. Eat. All I heard Marco say was love. Libations! <laughs> Libations! <laughs> <laughs> So we had a good time, and then the young ones, you know when you, I was ready to go home and go to sleep, but the young ones on the staff, they were still ready to go out and party. I saw Marco, I, did, I think you hit two or three parties after that. Yeah, I made it a whole weekend. I made it the whole NAACP weekend, I made it. Yeah, okay, yeah. did you get us guests to come on the show? And with... Of course, I was working, Sherry. I'm out there hustling, networking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm glad you did, Marco. I bet, it, I bet you that whole, all of my models too, Sherry. He just all swimsuit models coming on the oh, show. Oh, so we going we gonna have the swimsuit models edition for the week with Marco. That's good, Marco. You still did good. That's good rating. <laughs> That's that young people. Good, energy. good rating. That's that young people energy. So Sterling, I said, take your wife out tonight and have her put the dress back on. Even if you take her to Roscoe's, have her put that dress on. <laughs> So y'all, actress Miriam Margulies, she's best known for playing Professor Sprout in the Harry Potter movies, but she is fed up with the Harry Potter fans. In an interview with the New Zealand Network, she said she is over it. Take a look. I worry about Harry Potter fans because they should be over that by now. You know, I mean, it was 25 years ago and it's for children. I think it's for children. but. They get stuck in it, I, and I do cameos, and people say, oh, we're having a Harry Potter-themed wedding. And I think, gosh, what's their first night of fun going to be? <laughs> I, 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 I can't even think about it, no. Uh, uh, Harry Potter is wonderful, I'm very grateful to it, it's, it's over. <laughs> That's what I think. John, I know it's gonna be some mad Harry Potter fan. They gonna be mad at Professor Sprout. That's who she plays, Professor Sprout. But you know, she's got a point. I can see both sides. Because sometimes people are a little too obsessive with these things. I have friends who still dress up to go see the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Y'all know Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror, they throw stuff at the screen. They go crazy. But for some people, this is, you know, who do this, it's about the memories that it brings them. But for me, because I don't, I don't get into stuff like that, I don't get it. I, I know it's a movie, yes, but I don't feel like I have to dress up. So I don't know how people have these Harry Potter theme parties. Not once, not twice, but like 12 times every year every year y'all traveling to Europe spending a year's salary to stay in a castle like Harry Potter I just I don't get that like how many Bridgerton parties are these people gonna have like when I tell and people get into it, they're suing the costumes, they're saving their money, they go, and I go, you get it, because you meet friends who share the same interests, but then all y'all talking about is Bridgerton and getting together and bringing Brid Bridgerton. Then I'd be over here thinking you having sex as Bridgerton. I mean, it's like, because everybody takes it so seriously, like Lord of the Rings. I, I, and I would love for somebody to explain to me what makes you take the stuff so seriously. But, because I'm just open, because it might be fun to try. You know, they got those parties where you get dressed as an animal. You oh. know, where you dress as a bear and all of that stuff and go have them wild, mm -mm. freaky, them mm -mm. little freaky parties. Mm -mm. I, I, I call that Halloween. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Miriam, Miriam, I like, I, you know, Miriam, her whole attitude was she's like, I don't have time for this, because she worked before Harry Potter and she's worked afterwards. So she's older and she's irritated when grown adults come, talk, come up to her, you know, talking about Harry Potter. And I'm sure she don't like to be called Professor Sprout all the time. So I don't think that she's saying she's not grateful. I think she's just saying, y'all gotta grow the heck up. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, it just, it came to me. 
Alfonso Ribeiro. I'm not mad if he doesn't want to do that Carlton dance for the 8,000th time. I'm sure he's grateful for Carlton, but there's other facets to his career. Although I got to say, I love it when he breaks out into that dance. I do. So, Miriam, I know you refuse to be stuck in the Harry Potter universe. We hear you. You go, girl. Go, Miriam. Now, y'all, a new mom is trending on Reddit because of what she named her baby. She wanted to name her baby girl after her grandparents, which was Harvey and Charlotte. So she named the baby Harlot. Oh. OK? Oh. All right, yeah. If y'all don't know what Harlot means, that's an old school word for prostitute. OK? So basically, you named your baby prostitute, all right? <laughs> See, this is why you got to have your friends around you. So when people say, I'm not telling anybody the baby's name. No, you should tell the baby's name. <laughs> because a good girlfriend is going to say, why are you naming your baby a hoe? You cannot. <laughs> that's not a good name. Because hoe is not short for harlot. Like, names are so important. Names dictate your purpose. So when you hear a name like Maximilian, you think that baby's going to be somebody. That's When you hear the, the name Thaddeus, that's greatness. I ain't never heard of Thaddeus saying, can you put money on my books, mama? <laughs> not Thaddeus. Like, what, what are people going to say when you come up to them and, and you say, my baby's name is Harlot? What do you want, what do you want us to say? Except when I go to the bathroom with the other women, I'm gonna be like, that baby gonna be a streetwalker. What in the world? <laughs> so I say change it to not Harlot, but maybe Harlow. Harlow is a very romantic name. Or even Scarlet. Scarlet is a really great name. But whatever you do, please take that Harlot off. You can't, you can't do that to your baby. And it was one other thing. I have to give a shout out to this young man. When I was at the NAACP in Image Awards, I had the pleasure of meeting the most remarkable young man. Um, his name is Lennox Sims. Now, Lennox was not, he, so cute. He was nominated for his role in Ava DuVernay's movie, Origin. And when I tell you, this young man is phenomenal. You've got to see Origin. Um, he was so phenomenal. Lennox played an 11-year-old boy whose Little League team won a championship back in 1951. And the entire team went, and it's based on a true story, went to a community swimming pool to celebrate. But they would not let Lennox, uh, his character, in the pool with the rest of the team because he was black. And he could only get in the pool if he didn't touch the water. So a lifeguard pulled him around on a raft, and he was trying to get on the raft and not touch the water. And you could see his face, how confused and hurt. His parents weren't there for him to turn to. And when I tell you there was not an, a dry eye in the audience, he brought me to tears. So when he came up to me and introduced himself, I was so happy I got to meet him to tell him what he did for me um, and how great he was, how phenomenal he was. And I love the fact that he had the best manners, John. He walked up to me. He said, hello, Miss Sherry. My name is Lennox Sims, and I want to tell you I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> That's what he said. And I said, somebody finally didn't talk their kids some damn manners. <laughs> I, when I tell you... I'm old school. These kids coming up to me to my, hey, Sherry. I'm like, what? Huh? Huh? I introduced myself to the little ones as Miss Sherry. Like, mm -mm, you, you're not gonna call me Sherry. We're not grown, we're not on the same level. You don't know as much as that, you ain't making the money. I'm gonna, you call me Miss Sherry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love that little Lennox. And I wanna say, Lennox, it was a pleasure meeting you. You are a phenomenal actor. He was nominated for, like, Best Young Artist. And I cannot wait to see what great things are in store for you, young man. <laughs> and y'all, we have a great show for you today. Because up next, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire star Annie Potts is here. <laughs> Jerry will be right back. and designing women to young Sheldon and a toy story. The love for my first guest spans generations. Now she's returning to one of her most legendary roles in Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Take a look. Like sitting right here 
in front of me. <laughs> I am such a fan of yours. You. And it has been 40 years after the first Ghostbusters. You're, the old gang is back. <laughs> and here's the thing. And like the Ghostbusters original, like you weren't like you weren't busting the ghosts' behinds, but right now you are back in there and you're busting up ghosts' asses, okay? <laughs> so, like, how does it feel now to be an action star? Well, I think it was about time for women to get out of the kitchen and from behind the reception desk. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Because we can bust some ghosts too. That's what I, I, I love seeing you when you got suited up and you were ready to fight out there. Yes, I, I got my own flight suit this time. You did? Yeah, I was, I, was, I was pretty excited. And I didn't know until like halfway through the movie. I, I didn't think I was, it's like they promoted me, the director came. I am really <laughs> excited to be an action person. You were such a you were such a badass when I was watching you, and I loved it. Now we just had Ernie Hudson here, like your co-star, and I was so excited that Ernie Hudson was here. I had him sign my chest when he was here, so he literally, yeah. like, are you looking <laughs> signing right in the gap on my shirt? I got carried away. I, like, are you enjoying like Ernie Hudson and his zaddy, his whole zaddy phase? I love Ernie Hudson. Yes, for. Many reasons. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. He he's still bringing it. <laughs> he is still bringing it. Oh my gosh! It's it was so you know I took my 18 year old with me and he saw the original. But like for me because I've seen all of the incarnations of Ghostbusters to see the cast back together again the original cast I loved it. Now you got to tell me who caused the most trouble on the set. Oh, come on. Uh-huh. I think uh -huh. we know. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, good trouble. Only okay. good trouble. It was only good trouble. Yeah. OK. Anybody was like the craziest? Any, you, do you guys do pranks on your set or anything like that? Um, you know, it was just enough for us 70-year-old people <laughs> <laughs> to be awake for it. And those, yeah. those packs are heavy. That was hard on the boys. Well, not Ernie. Yeah. But... He okay. said the packs were like 50 pounds. They're, they're really, it's like, can't they make them out of foam or something? I mean, they don't really shoot proton lasers. Right. Maybe a little light, but... Okay, so by the time y'all got, you were too tired to be playing pranks. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much of that. <laughs> You know what I have to say to you, uh, just looking at you, I'm such a fan of designing women. I loved you. That was my show. And your character, Mary Jo, you were the first, like, to be, to be portrayed on TV, the first divorced woman who became, who was like a single mom on designing women. So do, do, yes, like, do, do fans come up to you and tell you how much that meant to you, to them? You know, over the years, and there have been a lot of them <laughs> now, but I still get people occasionally who'll come up and go, you know, I used to watch that with my mother or my grandmother, yeah. and they were, you know, they were single mothers, and one, uh, more, more than one, to say, you know, my mom was so embarrassed because we were in the South and it wasn't accepted, and your show made it okay, and your character helped that, and it just make, makes me so happy that, yeah. uh, you know, we in comedy like to provide a service. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the laughter. <laughs> but you know, when you did designing, when you did designing women, you were also, at the same time in your real life, you were a single mom yes. uh, to your son, and he was, was he seven years old on the show? He was four when we started. Okay. He, when, I like to think of it this way. When we started out, he was on a tricycle, and by the time we were done, he was zipping past the cameras on, on uh, skates. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so for that whole time, it, for, you know, we were talking about this uh, on a show earlier about the sacrifices that we make, especially being single mothers. So it's so hard with our career of, I know with Jeffrey, of having to go out of town to do stand-up comedy and come back. Was Designing Women something where you were able to just actually stay home with your son? Yes, it's for seven years. Okay. And because we, before I got that, he said, Mommy, I want to play soccer. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Well, mama's gonna make sure you do play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> if I have
have to prostitute myself. <laughs> you will play soccer every yeah. Saturday. Yeah. So, yeah, we do those things because, you know. Yeah, Jeffrey used to send me pictures when I was on a set with the tear coming down his eye. Oh. So it's like, you know, to be able to work on a set and, and be able to have your child there roller skating and riding the bike, it's something. You know, it, did it assuage that mother guilt a little bit? Yeah. Uh, yes, it did. It just reminded me of a story. I, I once had, I was shooting, I was shooting Pretty in Pink, I think, and okay. and I had to get my kid to a baseball game and shooting went too mm -hmm. long. I, I said, oh shoot, what am I going to do? And I, 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 I called the limo service and yes. I, I, the, the limo driver came over and I said, I want to take a walk with you. I said, you got to take my kid to, to practice. And I said, if you hurt one hair on his head, <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> Later, friends who were there said, oh my God, there was the loveliest person in the stands watching Clay play. And they said, at one point he fell down and that guy was on the field and caught him <laughs> mid-air. You, so. you got him straight. <laughs> you know, and now, now you are a grandma. Okay, you look amazing. I don't know. So being a grandma, we also talked about this. Like, what do your kids call you as a grandma? Like, is there a certain name you got? Uh, yeah, I got one right now. I don't know if it'll stick because they're tiny, but they call me Tati. Yeah, okay, Tati uh, sounds good. It, yeah, uh -huh. I, I I like it. They can say it, yeah. but it might morph into something else. Okay, I said I. You know, when my son has kids, I just don't want them to call me Big Mama. Like, how do you like? <laughs> how do you, what do you think about the t people calling you Big Mama? Well. I don't know. I had a big mama in my life who I loved deeply. So I wouldn't, I'd be okay with big mama. You'd be okay with big mama. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Now, your daughter in law, she brought you home some special <laughs> diapers. Yes. Yeah, and there, what was that? my precious little grandson was running around with a, with a diaper on that had me as Bo Peep on the front of it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look the at this. I don't know if one aspires to have your face on a diaper. <laughs> Even if it is an animated thing. But anyway, I guess that's a, I guess that's a measure of success. What a homage. Somewhere. That is an homage <laughs> to you. Like, so do you, is there anything else you want your kids to know? Like, would you like to be on anything else for your grandkids? Um, just on their hearts, baby. Just on their I hearts. I love that. Because I gotta tell you, you are Bo Peep, and I know that you are on Band-Aids. You are on the kids' Band-Aids. <laughs> and I cut my arm, and they brought me a Band-Aid, and it's Bo Peep. You, you, you work okay? When you were playing, and it was when you were on um, Toy Story, and you were the voice of, your character was mm -hmm. the voice of... Bo Peep. Of Bo Peep. And so they put this on my arm, and I was like, I like this. This is my love. This is Annie Potts on my arm over the cut, healing my cut on my wrist. Here, let me kiss it, the boo-boo. Oh! <laughs> Instead of answering my questions, she's going to be responding to, responding to her littlest fans, the kids. Don't miss it. <laughs> Jerry will be right back. Okay, I am back with Annie Potts from Ghostbusters. Woo! So from Ghostbusters to Toy Story, Annie has starred in so many projects that are loved by kids. So it's time to hear from some, from some tots for pots, okay? <laughs> so our first question comes from Ghostbusters superfan Riley. Take a look. I love the Ghostbusters movies. The only thing that scares me more than ghosts are clones. Yeah, clones are free. <laughs> What scares you the most? Oh my gosh! So, Riley and his clone, Kellen, they want to know what scares you the most, Annie. I think they are the scariest thing <laughs> ever. It, it was like, it literally oh, wow. was like they were possessed by one of the toys. Yeah, wow, I don't know if we can beat anything like that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, the next question comes from another Ghostbusters fan, Sarah. Take a look. Would you eat the Marshmallow Man? He's just so squishy. 
so Sarah asked if you'd eat the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, Annie. No, no, no. and I need to talk to her mother. <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's not right thinking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he is, though, you see those little Marshmallow Man and they come out 100 deep, I mean, it's just like. They do, and then they have fangs and stuff. And, and all they... of that. Okay, so that's a no. Our next question is from Anya, take a look. My mom is obsessed with the movie Pretty in Pink. And I wanna know, how do you get your hair so spiky? <laughs> okay, well, Anya wants to know about your Pretty in Pink hair, cause you had the spikes going on. I did. Yeah. I, uh, it, gosh, it's awful looking. <laughs> That was a long time ago. I don't remember how they did that. I'm sure it's some product that wouldn't that even a... be cleared by the EPA now. Okay. I don't know how they did that. That but... is a lot of moose right there, Annie, going on. Well, we got Shiloh. So Shiloh is a big Toy Story fan, and he's got a question for, watch. Is Woody nice in real life? Oh, so Shiloh wants to know if Woody, played by Tom Hanks, is nice in real life. Woody played by Tom Hanks in the movie, is one of the nicest people you could ever, ever meet on the planet. That's but not we weird. knew that. But we knew that. We knew Are you, that. Well, Annie, I'm so glad you came. I want you to come back, all right? You would like, I love it. So y'all, the final season of Young Sheldon airs Thursday nights. So you gotta watch it on CBS and Paramount Plus and catch Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters March 22nd. I had a ball, I took my son, it was so much fun. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Jerry, we'll be right back. With some new spring trends. So here to take us through them all is lifestyle expert Brittany Levine. We're Brittany, back. you're back. <laughs> These are our so what spring is this? trends. Yes. So okay. we're seeing a lot of girls and guys go around with their scrunchies on their wrists. Yes. But what these scrunchies are are taking up a notch. They have secret zippers. I'm oh. gonna give you this one so, so that you can you put, can stuff, put in there. stuff in them. Yes. They're like a smunchy little scrunchie, right? Yes. You can put your pods in there. Oh, and your put the pods keys. in there. Here, let me give you the keys. Because I like the keys. Yeah. Put the keys, keys in there. In, and push them in there. In. You just push yep. them down. Lip gloss. Oh yeah. my gosh. There so you go. Like you don't, you can't even feel them on your wrist. And then I'm gonna put this on this side. There right? you go. And then push and that then down. You push in it there. down yes. And then you're gonna close it up. And, and you, then you zip them up like on the side here. Okay, there's a little zipper yeah. right there. And I mean, like it. And this, you'll see these trends everywhere. So you won't lose anything. You won't lose right anything. There, yeah. You don't have to worry about if someone, you know, stops. There's a lot of stuff okay. going on right now. We've got bigger scrunchies, all different yeah. colors. And I love the velvet, the satin. So really, really cute. Oh, you don't even know. That, see, yeah. That's cute. <laughs> you never will know like it's a there. Set of these. Okay. We always like to do a little bit of beauty trends. So all of our beauty talk girls. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sherry, you're, what you're seeing here is it's broccoli, broccoli okay. right? We're taking a little veggie to our face and creating oh. those broccoli freckles okay. with the contour sticks. Oh, six. now people want freckles now. <laughs> now people, people want, want freckles. freckles. They want a sunkiss look. I'm gonna give you this one. This is okay. Sydney. All our right, intern. Sydney. Here so we go. So we're gonna put a little contour and you wanna dab it on your hand first, okay? On the My grandmother would go, y'all wasting good broccoli, <laughs> but okay. That's been, yes. Everyone's been talking about that too. We'll dab it on our hands so we don't give too much because you want that little sun-kissed freckle right. glow. And then we'll take it to the cheeks. So you put it on. And the dab it on like a little freckle, light freckle. Oh, it does look yeah. like you have freckles. Okay, and it's like a little contour addition. Yeah, so you like, that's a little bit, we can go darker too. I like, so if, yes. you, if you went darker <laughs> with my skin, it'd be moles. You put oh the moles on your face. I love it. You do have freckles now. It's the trend. Yes. It's so cute. It's what we're seeing. Okay. Coming into springtime. What's the springtime? We have time? Easter coming up. Oh, the Easter egg. Yes. Oh. So this is a really fun thing to do with your kids at home. Home, if you're having a little Easter party, yeah. what you see here is whipped cream. All okay. right, I'm gonna give you here your food coloring here. Got the food coloring. Yep. Uh -huh. So we're kind of making these marbleized eggs. Yeah. They're like not the normal version, you know, Easter eggs that you see everywhere because this gives a little bit more of effect with the whipped cream. So you I can just, just dab in exactly. In this is organic food coloring. Oh, okay. And then so it's eatable. It's yes. It, okay. Exactly. And then we're gonna just 
mash it up and make it like a little tie-dye no, whirl like art. Marble. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then these eggs have already been sitting here in water. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take the eggs, just put them in, and then you can kind of move them around, you give it a little in, swirl. In the, in the yeah, exactly. Oh, so usually you do it with the shell. Yes, it, okay. right. This, so this is already done. And then we're gonna have these sit like this in water here. Okay. Sit for put five in the cold minutes water. and put it in the fridge. And then they come out and they look like this beautiful Oh, this is great. And right you can here. eat it. You can eat it. Yes, you can eat it. I like this. So easy, tasty, really nice. And I love to taste the whipped cream, yeah. girl. This is great. Well, then you're gonna love this one okay, too. Okay, so what is this, this one? This is a take on our chocolate chocolate bunny drink, okay? Mm -hmm. We're seeing everyone, all you're gonna do is cut off the ears here. Cut off the careful. ears. Yep. All right. So you have a hollow chocolate bunny. Okay. And we have chocolate milk. I have chocolate milk for you right there. So you we pour. can pour it in. You have your, here, I'll give this one okay, to you. Okay, the little yep. thing. You pour the chocolate you milk in. pour it in. in on top, exactly. Now, you could spice this up a little bit if you put a little, you know, ooh, my, my ooh, Okay, I got through. mine just right. All right, this is perfect. I got course, mine right, because I know what I'm gonna be drinking. Okay. <laughs> you know what else is gonna go in mm -hmm. here. You could put a little whipped cream on top. I'm gonna put ooh. one, yep. Whipped cream, whipped cream on top, on, oh my yeah. Gosh. Why is yours so perfect? Because mm, I know what I'm gonna be drinking, exactly. okay. And then you take a little sip. And you put it in, mm -hmm. like this. Mm. Girl. Oh, chocolatey. Oh, this is good. Eat funny cocktail. All right, mm -hmm. next up, now that we have our chocolate, we're gonna get into our workout this section. This is good. <laughs> you can bring the whipped cream, but this is after the whipped cream. Mm -hmm. This is what we're calling the updated thigh master. Mm. All right, you know the thigh master the thigh from master, back in the day. Yeah. Yes. So this is a little bit different because you can do it in many d different ways. You can come on down to the floor here. Okay, I'm gonna get on the floor. All right, and you can put it <laughs> between your inner thighs. Okay, but how am I supposed to be like You can this? lay down on the ground. If lay you down, want. Yep. okay. So you can do go to the side, you could do your oblique. Oh, so I put it right in between my thighs like <laughs> put that? Put it right in between your thighs like that and then just start going. Oh my God. Pelvic floor. That is like. Pelvic floor. I can feel that. You can feel it. It looks Oh easy. my God. It's easier said than done. That's not. Uh, woo! Okay, I have my arms here. You could also put it to your arms to do your. No, arm I need workout. to work on these thighs right here. <laughs> you know, right? Oh my goodness! It's hard. It uh, really it is. It's so. So hard. it's all about repetition. But you could do this while you're watching your favorite TV show, uh, uh, and that's why we call it the updated thigh master. Whoa! Because it's inner pelvic floor. Oh my it gosh! Works all of those muscles and. This is like doing yeah. Kegels. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's what everybody says. Too. Wow! I can feel it on my abs too. You feel it all over. Okay. I like this. Over. I like. This. Yes, so updated Thigh Master, major fitness Oh, trend. wow. All right. And then, I'm light. last but not least, what is this? What we have here, oh. everybody for spring is doing these sack races, right? Yes. But for Easter, and if you're having a party, we're gonna give a little sack race for you, also called the bunny hop okay. race. Okay. All right? <laughs> so we're gonna get you in here, and okay. we're gonna also call in Marco. Come on, to Marco. Come and play with us. Marco's gonna play with us. Okay. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna move you over here. I gotta give you our bunny ears, too, because. Okay. Come in between you guys. The goal is, all right, okay. Marco, step over here for me. Okay. Sorry, I know you're not. So we're back <laughs> here. You wanna, can can you put them you? on? Yes. Okay. okay. So there's our bunny oh ears. Oh my gosh, perfect. I'd ask you out. I'd ask you out, Marco. Could. All right. Okay, perfect. so it's perfect. right okay. here. Okay. I don't want to fall. Yeah. No, we're we good. Go. We're good. So all we're going to do is get to the end, and the goal is to put as many carrots as you're supposed to do three and three. Got it. You, have to have all of them in order to come back to me. Okay. Whoever gets to me first, slaps my hand first, is the winner. <laughs> Audience, could we have a little encouragement? Let's pull this up a little bit. A little all right. Yes. All right. Okay, Marcus, already up. All right. Three, two, got one, go. for Sherry's Hit List. Now, I am here with Paige from Delaware. Hey, Paige. Hi. 
<laughs> so, Paige, today is National Let's Laugh Day, so you got 30 seconds to name five of the top 10 highest grossing female stand up comedians of all time. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put 30 seconds on the clock and go. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Okay. Um, uh, Melissa McCarthy. Yes. Uh, Tina Fey. Yes. Uh, did I say Amy Schumer already? Uh, did Amy Schumer, you said Amy Schumer, uh, yes. So you, you uh, Roseanne Barr. Uh, uh, Mindy Kaling. Mindy Kaling, Mindy Kaling. And um, uh, uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, uh, yes, you did. I think you got six. <laughs> All right, Paige, so congratulations because you will win a Casio Tone LKS 450 keyboard to bring your music to life. We'll be right back. It's Women's History Month, and today we celebrate Melanie Perkins. Melanie's the co-founder and CEO of Canva, an online design and visual communication company, one of the world's most valuable startups founded and led by a woman. With over 125 million users, Melanie's platform has empowered millions to express their creativity. Her mission also extends beyond profit. She believes in using tech for good, providing free subscriptions to schools, nonprofits, and refugees. Melanie has been a champion for gender equality in tech, building her company with a 41% female workforce. We celebrate you, Melanie Perkins. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jerry, we'll be right back. We have another great show for you tomorrow, so join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye-bye. <laughs>